Okay, so this was super popular years ago. Two years ago? Three years ago? Was it even in this house? Maybe pre-house. This is the new revision of the topping MX-3, the MX-3S. And they've made drastic improvements to it. And the reason it was so popular is it's, just like the thumbnail says, everything. It's a headphone out, a DAC, a speaker out, Bluetooth receiver, has analog inputs, can make you coffee. I'm lying about the coffee bit. Doesn't do coffee. But it's also $200. And if I told you, right, if you asked me, because this is what people do, like if you're in the $10 chat, if you support me on Patreon, so for $10, you get into a special chat where I am, and people are talking, and I'm talking, and they're messaging me, and I, and I answer your questions directly. And if someone said, Zios, I, for my desk, I need a headphone amp, a DAC, and speaker, amp for, for passive speakers, and it's nice if it has Bluetooth, like 24-bit Bluetooth, and remote control. And I'd be like, what's your budget? And I would be thinking five or $600. And then you would drop the $200 bombshell and I'd tell you to get the five, wait there a minute. So now this exists, unplug, um, 3.5 millimeter in the front, unfortunately. I would, I, I'm a huge fan of 4.4 Pentacon, even if it isn't a balanced output. I am okay with the world and society. If you put a 4.4 and be like, look, this is just because 3.5 millimeters sucks, and here's an adapter. Just given it, here's a DD Hi-Fi adapter I'm using. Boom. So now I have 4.4 becomes 3.5. But if we look at it, big screen, beautiful and clear, uh, infrared receiver, 3.5 millimeter. You get your digital volume knob with push button, so you can see the options we have. We have auxiliary, which we'll see in the back. You've got Bluetooth, which is, again, 24-bit. You've got USB input. You've got optical input. You've got coaxial digital input, which is what I'm using. Um, the indicators here, we have a gain indicator. It just says gain. If you're on high gain, it says gain. If you're on low gain, it says nothing. You have get your switch here between headphones and speakers or both. You get your indicator on top. You get your volume. Um, there are bass and treble controls. I want tone controls, Zeos, also in this fucking system for both the headphones and the speakers. And I'd be like, bitch, you crazy. But here we are. Here's a remote control, by the way. And uh, if you're a topping fanboy like I am, you'll know that the model number at the bottom is pretty much consistently a 15, very rarely a 16, and even more rarely a 17. Well, here's a fucking 13A. So this doesn't exist. I had to actually get batteries for this remote. I have a whole pile of topping remotes. And I'm like, oh, it needs a 13A? Never even heard of that. So you get your power, your mute. Uh, up and down volume is here. Uh, play, pause, next and last track are for Bluetooth. If you have this connected to your phone and you want to just like, you can next track from the remote through this unit, through your phone. Um, then you get your treble and bass settings, which at any point you just hit it. And you can go up and down, what's the thing, 8 decibels, 12 decibels, 10 decibels. We'll split the difference. Um, so you hit that and you go up and down. If you leave it at zero, it doesn't show anything on the screen. If you were to go in here and adjust the treble one and adjust the bass one and then got out of it, you would now see treble has been adjusted, bass has been adjusted, and gain is on high. So it just keeps adding indicators. Now we're going to reset that to zero. And um, obviously... For your desk, this thing is pretty fucking nutso. But I don't want you to just think about desk. For $200, listen to me. You hearing the words? Think living room, all right? Forget how good the headphone amp is in this. 700 milliwatts, three quarters of a watt out of the front headphone amp. I think they said it's 200% more than it did previously. We'll go into the numbers in a second. But... Plop this fucker right down under your television with a little Bluetooth antenna hanging out there. You got your remote control for your couch. You got passive speakers hooked up. We're going to move at some point in this review. Check the timestamps. Zios, don't forget timestamps. Um, check the timestamps. We're going to move over to the speaker review area, which I'll probably do in 40 minutes, and you'll see it in seconds, and um, test this out in speakers. Because over here on the desk, this is one option for like, get rid of all this clutter, all this clutter. You just, you just want bochi and this and done. So that's why I'm here with the 
Argon, T60 Argons. I've got the Thyodio Ghosts, still using Meze Pads. By the way, Meze Pads might not be available for much longer on Mimic Audio because Mimic was told by Meze, fucking stop it. Uh, because apparently we sold like 130 pairs of pads and Meze's like, wait, we didn't sell that many 109s through you. What the fuck's going on? Um, I've also got my NDH30s out and I know why I don't use them all the time because they're too good. Um, I also brought out the Rinkos, which are my collab I am for 100 bucks. If you haven't seen them or heard them, please go see them and then hear them. And I was using these to test this. And I will say it picked up a little bit of the internal noise. Like there's going to be some negative to this. It's not like this isn't like a topping LA 90s. This isn't like seven, eight hundred dollars. It's 200 bucks. They squeeze all this shit in there. So with a sensitive I am, which these really aren't that sensitive, but sensitive I am, if I was switching between like headphone output and speaker output or both, it was getting weird like clicks and pops and like, ee, like a noise in one channel. But then I started playing things that went away. And uh, well, here, let's turn this around. Let's detach that and then turn this around. Excuse me. Oh God, everything's clicking and popping and making noise. So, Bluetooth antenna, USB-C is your Bluetooth input. Thank you, everything should be USB-C now. Don't want to see no fucking other USBs, fuck off. Optical in, coaxial in, subwoofer out. Oh, that's another thing. You want to have a dedicated subwoofer out in your thing that does all these things. So yeah, this has a dedicated subwoofer out. So when we move it over to the speaker testing arena, we're gonna have a set of speakers, and then we're gonna add a subwoofer. So you can have a 2.1 system at your at your desk or in your living room and control it all for $200. So moving on. Um, you get your auxiliary in, which is very rare to have actual digital inputs and a set of analog inputs. So I can go hook up a fucking turntable to this or any source with a, I gotta go a $5,000 DAC to this. If I felt like it, I wouldn't, but I could. And then you have your little mini uh, fiber binding posts and your power plug here, which is a 26 volt, 26 volt, 5.76 amps. So that's a little monster right there. Put some shit down. Um, let's plug you back in and I'll give a quick rundown of, of the headphones. So. I plugged in my cable here. You know, you know this cable, right? This is the cable that gives you the speaker outputs into a headphone out, which either a balanced or in this case, I have an adapter 4.4. So LA90D or LA90 are like my benchmark. Now that's a topping, that's a topping. Now this topping has Meru's uh, fucking amplifiers in it, which is different from that, whatever the hell that's. Doing. Yeah, Meru's class D and 62 watts per channel, but only with, 10% distortion. You don't want that. Never, if there's a limit, if there's a, a thing that's telling you 10% distortion and 1% distortion, you never want to push past 1% distortion. So in truth and reality, it's a 50 watt per channel amplifier at 8 ohms. At 4 ohms, which is like insanely low and no speakers are not, this will still do 30 watts per channel at 1% distortion. The MX35, the MX3S is suitable for daily use. Thank you for telling me that. Anyway, here are the improvements over the previous generation. If you have a standard MX3, pay attention to this part because the the improvements have been by 12 decibels, they've improved the signal to noise ratio, which I was already praising it before. So now the actual signal to noise is 115 dB. There's now two levels of gain instead of one level of gain. And it puts it high at 14.8 decibels VR, whatever the fuck matters. Um, the noise is 50% reduction. So the actual A-weighted noise inside the unit is halved. Halved. And then the output power, and here's where it gets funny. Because the old one, the original MX, was about a quarter of a watt. 257 milliwatts at 32 ohms. This one is 700 milliwatts at 32 ohms. And that's under 1% distortion. So that's a 200% increase, more than 200%. That's more than a 200% increase. And they're showing the values here, yeah, from 42 to 100 milliwatts at 300 ohm. So the output power of the headphone amp is fucking competitive 
with just standalone headphone amplifiers. And then the output, uh, speaker output performance, you get 19 more decibels of signal to noise, so from 91 to 110, and I don't think they changed the A-weighted noise. So yeah, those are the only specs you need to fucking know about. If you were, and I know there's plenty of people out there who still love their MX-3, and are like, well, I gotta replace it, Zios, because something new has gotta, here it is. It came along. It came along and Zios put a fucking sticker on it. All right, immediately. So we're feeding it, we're feeding it out. Um, I was testing, we gotta take out the big boys. All right, here's the big boys. Here are the Argons. And I will say this, I'm not gonna bother you hooking back up. This will play on high gain, out the headphone out of this at 80 out of 100, you can use T60 Argons. That said, you get a little more mm, coming out of the speaker outs on the back of it. And even that said, I've heard it sound better on like dedicated giant speaker amps. So if you're looking for a cheap way to power Argons, this still isn't it. It's still not it. Bruh, bruh. These are, these are real fucking hard. So we'll, we'll look at something that's more affordable, attainable, and less impossible to drive. So now these, the ghosts out the front, I'm still using high gain. I could use low gain. I was around, I think it was hovering in the 81 to 85 out of 100 on uh, low gain. But on high gain, I'm at like 50, which is like a little trip with me. Fucking low rider. Okay, change tracks. Yeah, high gain, super quiet track. This is from uh, Hateful Eight. So I'm at 80 out of 100 on high gain with this. But I can tell it's too loud. It's gonna, it's, it's, it's mm, gonna, mm, it's gonna, mm. all right. I don't wanna make this review 40 minutes long. So I'm wrapping up the headphone section. As a desk unit, this on a desk, powering speakers, we'll test that in a minute. This, this it says for headphones, yes. I'm gonna stop testing headphones now. Is it the greatest headphone amplifier on the face of the earth? No. For $200 alone, you can get a, probably a better headphone amp standalone. But you ain't gonna find one combined in a unit that does all this and have it be better than this. How's that? So let's see how it does with speakers. Because for fucking headphones, it gets a massive pass from Zeos. Moving to speakers. In fact, I'm doing that tonight, even though my knee hurts. Let's go. Bochi, let's go. Uh, all right, Space Lord, Monster Magnet. Um, Here it is. Took out the Broadman FS because they're hard to drive and they're very pretty. And I haven't heard them in a few weeks and that's why. So I've got them wired to this. I've got this wired to coaxial. I got subwoofers that are there, the point one subs, which are two Yamo C912s in the perfect listening position there. Um, I've got these cool slightly smaller version of the speaker cables I was showing off before from Amazon for like $30. Because, you know, high-end cables matter, but high-end looking cheap cables also matter. Um, I've got them on high gain. We're at 88 out of 100. We're pushing this thing. And I'm afraid to go any higher because I really don't want to touch that distortion line. Like, distortion will only happen if it draws more than 50 watts. And that'll happen only when it's pulling a load of low end which unfortunately when you plug the subwoofer in, it doesn't kill the low end from the speakers. That would be like a more expensive unit. Can't do that with $200. I don't know what it is. I feel like that should be an easy to do thing. I know the new Canto little micro monitors do that, but not this. So high gain, 88 out of 100. Whoa, that was loud. I'm gonna turn the knob. Okay, let's try, let's try 78 out of 100. And we'll back that song up to the very beginning again. Let's try 72. That's Mohawks. Uh, beat me till I'm blue. Okay. Oh, by the way, a Meru wallpaper also now available because Meru Red Succubus Girl, you don't know the story? Look her up. Anyway, she'll be in the wallpaper hoard, which is available in the description. And every wallpaper I've ever used ever is in there. And since Imager's doing this thing now, who the hell knows how many of my wallpapers that were linked are now just going to be like, oh, 
that's not safe for work, even though they really aren't and just evaporate from the internet. So, even more now than ever, do you need Drizilio Sync and me selling, sending you shit directly? I want to go to heaven when I die and I'm on. That's uh, Harry Belafonte, Wake Up Jacob. So anyway, I sat here listening for a little while. Obviously, these are not perfect because there's not tables in the side. So they're li lacking a little bit of that width in the mid-range. But the treble's here. All I care about is the treble. And if you're going to do treble, you do it on the fucking Broadmans. You take those tweeters and you point them at you from this distance and you go, are you good? And the answer is yes. I don't... I close my eyes and you're like, all right, you're just assessing the tweeters? I can't tell. This versus LA90D. For just that... Like, I'm pretty sure if I had these perfectly set up or had a different set of speakers that were like, per I, I would be able to like pick them apart. But most of the music you're listening to doesn't pull more than 10 to 20 watts. So 50, clean, and 62 or 65, meh, you're not going to touch it. And then you throw the sub in, which here's a little uh, chink in the armor. I'm on high gain with these, right? So listen. I got some friends. I switching tracks to something that's got some low end. Okay, boom. Overseer, stomp box. Great. You hear it? Let's take this off of high gain, which you hold on select. Now it says L, now we're on low gain. Sub didn't get any lower. So you will have to balance the subwoofer on its controls because these are hard to drive. I'm on high gain. I'm cranked up. Subwoofer's pretty even. I'd probably go back to and turn it down if I felt like it. But if I put it on low gain, if I had way more efficient speakers, if I had those JBL Studio 590s hooked up instead of these, um, I'd have to go and turn that sub way down because high and low gain does not affect the subwoofer out, which is kind of good. Hi, actually here, we could know what we could do. We could take the bass and we're gonna take the bass down 3 dB. There. Now we're on high gain, bass is down, it should affect the sub. That actually is better. So yeah, I'm just I'm just I can adjust it. The fact that you could adjust it, bass and treble adjustments on the fly on a speaker amp from a distance is OP as fuck. On powered monitors, it's pretty common to have bass and treble, but not on a active speaker amp for passives like to have it just like boom like one button and then adjust so if you put this in your living room and you know the kids are asleep or you hate the fucking kids and you want to wake them up you hit the bass knob turn it up you got neighbors you like bass down you got neighbors you hate bass up you want to annoy the wife fucking hit treble crank it to a million women can hear high frequencies better than men usually which is weird because you'd think there'd be more audiophile ladies if they could hear to the like 22,000 hertz throughout their entire life. But maybe that's why that you go to audio shows and it's just dudes and beards because they're all deaf. And dudes and beards that are deaf love spending money on speakers. Let's change tracks. Kevin Pankin, the intimate chair. Oh, God. Oh, it's from Made in Abyss. No, 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 no. No. No, that's probably from the movie. Oh yeah, it's from the movie. Oh God, no, no intimate chairs, please. Uh, I'll skip forward that song. I want to hear how bad it gets. Because if you've not watched Made in Abyss or Made in Abyss movie or Made in Abyss second season, I would say you haven't lived, but the truth is you haven't suffered. Oh my. That sounds amazing. Anyway, I think this qualifies as uh, good. I think this would probably power any speakers on your desk you want, even Micah RB42s to within their limits. Micah RB42s are fucking baller. They're up there and over there. Um, yeah. Full approval of the MX3S, which they, they did a lot of work to this to improve it over the previous. It's been years. It's been literally multiple years. So they should have done this already. I'm kind of glad they waited this long because everyone sort of forgot about the MX-3. And this is a great chance to remind you all that it existed. People are still using it. People have messaged me within the last two weeks about their MX-3s. And I just got this today. And I'm like, well, fuck. 
So I, I guess this is it. My only, I wish it had a quarter inch output on the front at least. If it's not a 4.4, give me a quarter inch. Just for the robustness of the plug. All right. I, you think I'd rather have a quarter inch on my phone than a 3.5? Yes. Because if I plug a quarter inch and fucking yank it around, it's not going to break. I'm always concerned about 3.5 millimeters breaking. And this is a plastic one. Um, but the screen is nice and clear. Base adjustment, treble adjustment, Bluetooth. In the secret menu, you can shut off Bluetooth. And there's a couple other settings that are not just on the remote. You read down the manual. It's just, it's in fucking Predator language. You know when the Predator thing was counting down? Because it doesn't have enough displays. It's like, this is a Y. And like, that's not a Y. Anyway, $200, unbeatable desktop solution, and fucking living room. Hook up your subwoofer, get your speakers. You don't have to have a sub to start it. You just get a set of speakers, a shitty set of speakers. I mean, crap, like the Yamo S803s. They're actually really good. And they're easy to drive, too. They'll be easier to drive than the Micas. And then plop those in there. And then plug in your things, and you're good to fucking go. Anyway, this channel, supported by viewers like you, Patreon and Subscribestar. See reviews early. Participate in yard sales. If I have the MX-3 original, which I might, that might be in the yard sale. Because I'd probably hold on to this. Although nothing's coming out to compete with this. Usually I hold on a thing and not sell it if I know there's a competition thing coming. What's coming to fight this? An SMSL product, maybe? I don't know. Not at this price point, except for them. Um, and uh, here's sound demos. All sound demos, by the way, now available only to patrons and subscribe star subscribers. Because I could play any music I want. And YouTube doesn't get to fuck around, just like Imager's gonna fuck around with that mirror wallpaper. Mirror wallpaper added to the hoard in the description. Because uh, Imager is going to start getting rid of their not safe work. And oh my God, does she, does she have a nipple under her shirt? Banned. So we'll see. So Imager to get all. Imager is no longer reliable for wallpapers, although I haven't been linking in a while. Check out the Resilio Sync hoard. Link to the uh, speaker cables from here and this thing. And I hope you all enjoy stickers. Be Marilyn Manson, and uh, yeah, ten dollar chat. See, talk to me directly. See reviews early and discuss things, and get to buy products. I'm done. Fantastic. I'm so glad there's an update. I'm so glad it happened now, because it's lived its shelf life. The original. It's time to an up for an upgrade, and the only thing I could see after that is all the things I've wished for, and I really, 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 really wanted to fix some of these. Wow.